Hey everyone, it's Mason at the Stetsmo Public Library. Uh, a couple of months ago I talked about how young adult books can be for everyone for a variety of reasons, and I wanted to do that again with graphic novels. When I talk about graphic novels, you probably think of stuff like superheroes or Garfield, or you might even think of Japanese manga. But those aren't the only categories that graphic novels come in. A lot of times that's the default of what we think, but I kind of want to change the default of how we all think of graphic novels. If you think of graphic novels just in those three categories, you're going to really limit your reading experience, and graphic novels are a way to try new things uh, a little bit faster than it might take you with a regular novel, and they're just a totally different reading experience. I have found that graphic novels are exceptional if you're someone who struggles with picturing things that are described to you in books. So if long descriptions of what a character is wearing or what a setting looks like are overwhelming, a graphic novel is a great solution, especially in science fiction and fantasy when the things that are being described aren't necessarily things that you've ever seen in real life. Graphic novels also really reduce the amount of exposition that the author and the illustrator have to do because they can show you the characters and the settings in just a few panels instead of taking chapters or pages to describe these things. If you aren't reading graphic novels, you can. I would love if you would try one. They are out there for every genre you could imagine. And I'm just going to run through a few of the graphic novels that we have here on our own shelves and what they're about. Pilu of the Woods, it's a magical realist book. Uh, I think I talked about magical realism in one of my other videos. Magical realism is a book with a world just like ours, but also includes magic. It's not uh, a fantasy setting or somewhere that doesn't exist. And this is a book about a child dealing with grief. And here is a little bit of what the art looks like. And if you're interested in graphic novels about grief or books about grief, this is a middle grade book. A good young adult adult book about dealing with grief is called Dancing at the Pity Party, uh, a dead mom graphic novel by Tyler Fetter. I'll figure out a way to put a photo of it here. And I know that there's a copy of it in the WVLS system because I've read it, so I definitely recommend that one. Next, and this is one of my favorites, this is Tilly Walden's On a Sunbeam. On a Sunbeam is one of Tilly Walden's newest graphic novels. They write a lot of graphic novels. Uh, their most popular other ones are Spinning, which is about their childhood as a competitive figure skater and the struggles of moving around and being a competitive figure skater. And then they also wrote a book called Are You Listening, which is also a magical realist book about grief. Maybe that's a theme that... Uh, ties together a bit more with a graphic novel than it does with a regular novel. Just something to think about. So On a Sunbeam is like a sci-fi space opera about a group of people who are living on a ship together and they travel around restoring old buildings on uh, nearly abandoned planets. And we focus on this girl who has joined the ship most recently uh, but isn't really being honest about why she decided to join the crew on the ship. Here's what some of this artwork looks like. And then this is more of an adult graphic novel. Uh, we have it in the YA section, um, but it's definitely something that is also for adults. YA is for everyone, but this is specifically about an adult's experience. So this is Invisible Differences, a story of Asperger's adulting and living a life in full color by Mademoiselle Caroline and Julie Dashes. And this is a semi-autographic, biographic book about what it is like to be an adult who has not been diagnosed with Asperger's or been diagnosed to be on the autism spectrum growing up, specifically in France, but it does apply a fair amount to the United States as well. And I can show you a little bit of the artwork in here. And this one plays with color a little bit more. So this is really good if you are someone who likes memoirs or if you're someone who is interested in the autism spectrum and what it's like to get a diagnosis or to try and pursue that. And then the last one I have is Kingdom by Jean McNaught. This is kind of a funky, funky textured cover. So I'm hoping that my new sticker doesn't fly away like it did the other day when I was first putting it out. 
and Kingdom is about a mother and her two children going on just like a little summer vacation to a little cottage and how their lives intersect. Um, this one is really interesting because it doesn't rely on dialogue so much as you can see. I hope you can see, you can see. There's not a lot of dialogue. There's a lot of watching what the characters are doing and experiencing the setting that the characters are in. Reading this book felt like meditating because a lot of the time you can kind of fly through a graphic novel and just whip through and look at the dialogue and kind of glance at the pictures. But for this one, I would really recommend slowing down and examining what is happening in these characters' lives. So in summary, if you haven't tried graphic novels, I really think you should give them a shot. It's fine if you like Spider-Man and Garfield and manga. Those are all also super valid, super great options. But I definitely think the world of genre graphic novels, fantasy, sci-fi, romance, thriller, whatever you want, I can help you find something. All right, I hope you guys have a great day.